Hello students, today we are continuing the remaining part of the cerebral palsy. So it is our third lecture. Now in this lecture we will be learning about the cerebral palsy physiotherapy management. Now the management is also long. So we have divided the management into two parts. So in this we will be learning three approaches those are commonly used for the treatment of cerebral palsy patient. First is neurodevelopmental therapy. It is commonly abbreviated as NDT. NDT for neurodevelopmental therapy. Many literatures they are also telling it as Bobath approach because it was uh, first given by Bobath. So, in this lecture, we have to understand first NDT approach, second facilitation and inhibition techniques. So how to facilitate behavior of different systems and how to inhibit the behavior of different systems. So that will be our second approach. Third approach will be sensory integration. So how we can enhance the sensation in our uh, cerebral palsy patients that we are going to learn. So let us start first of all with physical therapy goals. So before we go for the goals setting we have to go for the assessment so in this lecture we are not going for the assessment so assessment is done first based on the assessment we have to plan the goals so what are the common goals those we have to consider for the treatment of cerebral palsy or cp patient so first is developmental training so it is nothing but related to the milestones development so most of the time when the parents they are coming with cp child so their complaint will be uh, like this only that my child is not able to sit, my child is not able to stand, my child is not able to hold any object clear. So all these are different gross motors and uh, fine motors uh, developmental milestones. So we have to assess this milestones and we have to work for the next milestone. So that is nothing but type of developmental training. We are working on developmental milestones. Then treatment of abnormal tone. So now we all know that uh, as per classification, spastic cerebral palsy means increased muscle tone, hypotonic cerebral palsy means decreased muscle tone, dyskinetic cerebral palsy, so it is fluctuating muscle tone. So in most of the uh, cases of the cerebral palsy patients, they are having tonal abnormality. So here we are working to normalize the tone also means if the tone is more we have to reduce it and if the tone is less we have to increase it so treatment of abnormal tone will be also one of the goals then training of movement patterns so most of the time the cerebral palsy patients uh, they're not able to perform individual isolated or skillful movement so mostly they are doing the stereotypical movement stereotypical means the movement will be of same type if you ask your patient to extend the wrist, patient will be performing whatever movement. Same movement will be performed if you ask your patient to perform the shoulder abduction. Okay, these are just two examples. But in short, whatever the movement you tell your patient to perform, patient will be performing only one movement. And generally, the upper limb goes into synergy that we are seeing. Clear? Or sometimes spastic muscle may pull the limb towards that side. So the movement pattern will be affected. So here our goal should be to establish normal movement pattern and we are giving training for that also to this cerebral palsy patients. Use of afferent stimuli. So for any motor performance we need good sensation clear. For example if I want to learn dance okay so for that I have to see the steps of my choreographer. So if I see properly then and then I will be able to perform properly later on. Okay, if I want to sing a song, so definitely I should listen music properly. So if I am listening properly, then and then I will be able to sing properly. So what does it say? That if you have good sensory system, then and then you will be able to perform good motor tasks. So in this example, uh, watching steps of the choreographer, listening music, all these are functions of sensory system. Okay, how will uh, they will be improving the performance? So they will be improving performance of the dance they will be improving the performance of singing you might have one uh, example that most of the time we have combination of deaf and dumb people clear so actually they are not dumb from the birth but just because they are deaf from the birth they have never heard the pronunciation of any word so definitely if they have never heard 
that how to pronounce any word definitely they will not be able to pronounce later also clear so they are not able to pronounce anything that's why they are dumb why because they have never heard any pronunciation so sensory input is very important and for that there is one specialized approach that is sensory integration that also we will learn in this lecture use of active movement so here many times it is possible that child will not be doing active movement with the affected side okay so that we have to promote okay by giving different types of the techniques then facilitation facilitation means helping so it is possible that child will not be able to perform few movements because of some tonal abnormalities or because of weakness so in this case we have to facilitate or we have to promote that behavior we have to increase that behavior in such a way that child will be able to perform that movement okay it may be applicable for movement also it may be applicable for developmental milestone also very simple example if i would like to say so for example if the child is not sitting clear so we have to initially support the child gradually we have to reduce the support and then child will be able to sit clear so initially what we are doing it is type of facilitation there are various techniques also for providing facilitation brushing icing etc but this was just very simple example to explain to you that what could be the facilitation clear simple manual touch will also be considered as facilitation then prevention of deformity so in most of the types of the cerebral palsy patients there will be problem of tone and 90% of the cp patients they will be spastic so actually what is happening because of spasticity there will be shortened position of the muscle that will be adapted by body clear so if bicep is spastic or calf is spastic so because of bicep spasticity elbow remains into continuous flexion so bicep will be in shortened position same in calf region the calf is spastic so the ankle remains into plantar flexion so because of this spasticity what is happening the muscle is remaining in shortened position for a prolonged period of time so that will lead to muscle contracture okay now after this muscle contracture even the joint is not moving so joint play is also compromised and ultimately it will result into deformity clear so in our example if we consider the calf so calf will be spastic that will lead to shortened position of the calf so that will be resulting into uh, calf contracture because of this calf contracture there will be deformity at ankle that is equinus so anyhow we have to prevent this deformity because once the deformity has occurred then only the surgery will be option but for preventive part physiotherapist has vital role so our one of the goals is prevention of deformity now let us continue with our first approach that is neurodevelopmental therapy and it is commonly abbreviated as ndt okay and uh, it is also known as bobak approach so whatever you are asked ndt neurodevelopmental therapy or bobak approach all three are same now the ndt approach mainly focus on uh, three parameters one is abnormal tone second is primitive reflex and third is automatic reaction clear so first of all it focus on correcting abnormal tone through the use of range of motion exercise encouraging normal motor patterns and positioning so now we all know that if the tone is normal then and then you will be able to perform normal movement so anyhow we have to normalize the tone so how it will be possible so it will be possible by range of motion exercise so that is nothing but passive exercise so now if you have spasticity clear so we need to go for slow passive movement and if it is hypotonicity or flaccidity we need to give fast passive movement clear so slow passive movement will reduce the tone and fast passive movement will increase the tone so that is range of motion exercise second encouraging normal motor patterns now every time just by giving passive exercise our role is not complete okay we must help the child to become independent so how it will be possible by promoting or encouraging active movements only clear so we have to work on active movements also for that you give different objects like you show the toy from the 
distance and motivate the child to get that toy from you okay so child will be performing active movement with his or her upper limb meanwhile his balance will be also challenged so he will also change position of his body to reach to your hand to get the toy from your hand so in short it is type of active movement encouragement okay so active movement will also normalize the tone and positioning so different positioning will also help for example if a child is having spasticity in calf region then standing will be helpful to reduce this uh, tone okay if the child is having spasticity in long flexors of the upper limb then again uh, you give quadruped position or the upper limb weight bearing so all this positioning will be helpful for uh, treatment of abnormal tone now primitive reflexes so that will be the second focus clear so actually primitive reflexes they have their own adaptive values they will be helpful okay but they should be integrated later on otherwise there will be a problem in continuing all activities of daily life for example atnr okay asymmetrical tonic neck reflex so whatever the side rotation occurs so on face side there will be extension of upper limb and lower limb so just imagine that if it persists clear so child will never be able to feed himself why because whenever the child sees food on whatever the side with right side or left side so the elbow goes into extension so again that will be useless child will never be able to flex elbow whenever he sees food clear why because the atnr persists clear so he will never be able to feed himself so anyhow we should work on inhibition of abnormal primitive reflexes so what is written abnormal primitive reflexes are addressed through the use of extension extension means we have to inhibit by repeated stimulation clear so anyhow we have to give exercise we have to plan the exercises in such a way that they will reduce or inhibit this primitive reflexes gradually third focus is on automatic reaction clear so automatic reaction they will be uh, useful for maintaining balance just imagine yourself if somebody is pushing from back side to you okay so you will not fall okay unless and until the force is too much but most of the time whenever our balance is disturbed we will be maintaining our balance and we will not fall in most of the cases clear so how it is possible it is by automatic reaction clear so you just remember the parachute reaction so whenever the child is held from the pelvis and the child is lifted the child will extend their upper limb okay so similar way whenever we are also getting perturbation from any side so our lower limbs will get extension as well as our upper limb will also get extension clear so lower limbs will uh, try to maintain the balance and upper limb will prevent the fall clear so this is also very important to work for this cerebral palsy patient clear so what is third goal so it is to work on the automatic reactions such as placing a hand out in front when a fall is anticipated as in the parachute response clear so you have seen this in parachute reaction as well as we also know that whenever we are also getting this perturbation being an adult individual we are getting extension of upper limbs and lower limbs both okay so that will prevent the fall now altering sensory input by careful handling and positioning that is also very important for normal development and avoiding abnormal posture so here the sensory input it is very important so most of the neurodevelopmental therapists what i have seen what they are doing when they are treating this cerebral palsy patients so this patients will be hardly wearing small underwear remaining whole part of the body is open okay why because this ndt therapist they are uh, touching their body in such a way that they will be also getting sensory input okay just remember one example when we were writing uh, a or one first time when we were in uh, pre primary or nursery so at that time our mother or our teacher they were holding uh, our hand they were holding our hand and they were 
moving our hand in such a way that we were able to write this a or 1 so why it was possible so it is by sensory input okay and by careful handling of our hand and positioning of hand clear so this is very uh, good example to remember that sensory input by careful handling and positioning that will be very important so whenever you are also treating this child your handling and positioning should be also such that they are giving sensory inputs to this children so as i told with minimum close uh, this people uh, cerebral pulse people or patients they are treated so they are getting tactile sensory input positioning that is also given with good sensory input in such a way that the child will learn this by experience actually movements they are experience clear yeah? by experience only we will be able to learn just imagine that if our mother or teacher uh, they have not held our hand to teach a or one it is possible that we have never felt that uh, particular movement and we will not be able to do it in the childhood clear yeah? so it is example of sensory input by careful handling and positioning okay but at the same time we have to take care that just to complete this task patient is not gaining any abnormal posture clear yeah. so for example if you are writing a or one first time with careful handling of your teacher or mother so at that time your posture should be also proper otherwise you will learn a you will learn one okay how to write but in the similar way you will develop another complications in the like wrist pain or uh, uh, joint pain in the elbow okay so all these are not advisable we have to avoid the abnormal posture simultaneously now what ndt is telling so it is telling that sensation of movement are learned not movement per se so it means that whatever the movement you are performing so that movement is felt by the brain okay so it is experienced by the brain and by that experience only the brain will remember that movement clear just imagine that if you are playing cricket so many times you might have uh, seen or you might remember when you were also child so first time when you are holding bat so your uh, elder brother or your father is holding bat along with you clear first time when you are riding your bicycle so along with you your father or your elder brother they are also uh, holding the handle of the cycle along with you clear so that you can feel that movement properly clear when you are driving car first time so along with you someone other who is uh, teaching this car driving they will be also uh, holding or handling this steering of the car clear so whatever the movement they are performing of handle of the bicycle or the steering of the car okay so that you are also feeling clear so once you feel then you will remember okay then next time you will be performing by your own brain clear so this is example that how the sensation of movement are learned okay we are not learning movement we are learning from sensation of movement clear so basic postural and movement patterns are learned which are later elaborated on to become functional skill clear so first time we need to feel this movement or we need to get the sensation of movement then gradually with practice it will become skill now ndt so what it is telling so it is telling that there will be techniques of handling patients from proximal joints which they are calling as key points of control to directly influence the output of nervous system so whenever you are giving treatment to the cerebral palsy patient so from wherever you are holding clear so they are known as key points of control for example if the child is not having good balance so you are holding that child from the pelvis clear so pelvis becomes your key points of control okay for example if you are uh, making any individual cross the road okay elder individual is asking for your help and uh, you are holding or handling his hand just hand okay and with your support that individual crosses the road clear so hand is your key point of control 
So from this two examples only you will be able to understand that if your key points of control are proximal then effort will be maximum by therapist patient needs less effort okay but if your key points of control is distal like if you are just holding the hand of the patient clear so maximum effort is given by patient clear so whether this key points are proximally situated or distally situated effort will vary now by changing the position of proximal joints they could stop the outflow of excitation in undesirable channels of muscular activity so uh, many times uh, we have seen that when the cerebral palsy patients walk so they will be having excessive lateral flexion of the trunk on both the sides right as well as left but just imagine that if you hold your patient from the side of rib cage okay just below the axilla if you are holding that patient when the patient is walking so that deviation that lateral flexion will be limited clear so what you are doing by changing position of proximal joint you stop the flow of excitation of this side flexors of trunk okay and you channelize the muscular activity clear now the types of key points they are proximal key points and distal key points so that already we discussed proximal key points they are like pelvis or you can hold from the upper part of the trunk you can hold from this knee clear so gradually you are shifting from proximal to distal and then gradually you are holding just ankles for example if you think of the upper limb so you are holding from the arms then you are holding from only with the hands clear so these are from proximal key points to distal key points you are moving now in this figure you can see different key points of control in the first diagram on left side the therapist is holding the child from west or pelvis so that is proximal key point in the second picture you can see that one hand of the therapist that is left hand is supporting the pelvis and right hand of the therapist is supporting the back region so these are known as key points of control another example so child is given support from the knee joint so the key points of control they are at knee joint clear so gradually it is shifted from pelvis to knees again for progression you can shift from knee to ankles also so where the maximum effort will be given by patient now by giving this support or by using this key points of control what we are doing so we are giving opportunity to experience the normal movement to patient so in the previous slide so this slide if you imagine that child is standing by herself clear so there will be some amount of knee flexion that will be remaining even if the child has got standing position so just imagine that knees they are remaining in 15 degree of flexion when the child stands by herself okay now so child is not able to complete the remaining 50 degree of movement okay so that is from 0 degree to 15 degree of flexion that is not gain okay now if you extend this knee okay by yourself that is by therapist clear so remaining 15 degree that was lacking that will be also experienced by this patient so definitely the remaining 50 degree if that is learned by patient in next attempt patient will try to perform that movement clear because we know the sensation of movement they will teach us how to perform the movement clear so the sensation of movement is very important so by this particular uh, example we can understand that remaining 15 degree of knee extension was given by therapist okay because child was not able to perform the complete extension so remaining 15 degree was given by therapist so that is felt by child so now the child will be attempting to perform the same okay so it is to give experience for normal movement okay now the sensory information of correct movement is absolutely necessary for development of improved motor control clear now correct movement is also very important here if we give sensory information in such a way that it is performing abnormal movement so if the child gets 
uh, abnormal sensation or we can say that sensation of abnormal movement so child will learn that clear so it is absolutely necessary that whenever we are giving this experience so we should take care that it is not giving sensation of abnormal movement let us understand with the same example in this example you can see that therapist is performing knee extension especially in last degrees now just imagine that if the therapist is giving excessive pressure so after zero degree of knee extension also if the child is further hyper extending the knee so that will be again wrong clear so here it will be the duty of physiotherapist to stop extension at zero degree instead of promoting hyper extension at knee while you are giving this knee extension at that time you also have to take care that trunk and all hip muscles they are also not performing any compensatory trick movement clear so what it is telling that whatever the movement is given or whatever the sensation of movement is given that should be controlled in such a way that the child is not learning any abnormal movement okay so the sensory information of correct movement of correct movement it is absolutely necessary for the development of improved motor control now second approach we are learning so that is facilitatory and inhibitory techniques so before we go for facilitatory and inhibitory techniques let us understand two terminologies first it is positive sign and second it is negative sign positive sign means it is presence of abnormal behavior and negative sign means it is absence of normal behavior i repeat positive sign means it is presence of abnormal behavior negative sign means it is absence of normal behavior okay positive sign examples spasticity hyperreflexia means the behavior is exaggerated negative sign means it is absence of normal behavior so that is hypotonicity flaccidity or hyporeflexia clear so that is reduced behavior so in short positive sign means it is increased behavior so in case of this increased behavior we have to give inhibition clear okay in case of negative sign there is presence of abnormal behavior, uh, behavior or it is uh, reduced any behavior of the system so in that case we have to work for facilitation clear so if the behavior is reduced we have to give facilitation if the behavior is increased we have to give inhibition so these are commonly uh, used sensory systems for facilitation and inhibition techniques proprioceptive system means what so proprioceptive system is responsible for giving sensory information that is occurring within the body clear so that is joint position joint movement so all this changes those are occurring within body okay so that will be informed to brain by this proprioceptive system clear so it includes muscle spindle golgi tendon organ okay then extraceptive so the name itself it is telling extraceptive means sensory information is coming from outside the body clear for example touch so if someone is touching so definitely it is not part of our body okay someone is touching from outside the body clear now they are touching our body so stimulus is actually from outside the body second example temperature okay so if you are touching any hot object or cold object okay so that is what that is not part of our body that hot object or cold object that is outside stimulus okay now it is touching to our body clear but the stimulus is outside the body clear uh, for example if you touch any sharp object and you are having pain so that sharp object is not part of our body okay that stimulus is coming from outside the body but stimulus it is coming to our body but stimulus is outside body okay so understand this difference so that is known as extraceptive sensory system then coming to vestibular system so vestibular system it is related to our head movement here if the head is moving in relation to remaining part of the body or in relation to environment that will be detected by vestibular system then special senses so special senses will include vision hearing 
smell, taste and touch. So by giving facilitation and inhibition technique to this uh, special senses also we can get the good motor performance. Then comes multisensorial. So that is combination of 1, 2, 3, 4, okay any number we will be having in combination and autonomic nervous system so that is by the use of our autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system that we know it is part of peripheral nervous system now let us understand one by one and what techniques we can use for individual system so if we think of the proprioceptive technique so we can use stretch we can use vibration and we can use inhibitory pressure so what is stretch so that all we know we are giving elongation to muscle now here we have to understand that if the stimulus is given fast it will be working as facilitatory technique and if the stimulus is given in slow and sustained manner it will be working as inhibitory technique clear i repeat for example stretch if we give fast stretch so it will increase muscle tone okay if we give fast stretch so it will increase muscle tone and if we give slow and sustained stretch so it will decrease the muscle tone clear so that will be applicable for all this uh, techniques if we give very fast it will be working as facilitation okay it will increase the behavior like tone will increase and if we give uh, slow and sustained so that will decrease the behavior for example slow and sustained stretching will reduce muscle tone clear okay so that is stretch then vibration so ready-made vibrators they are available that can be used they are mains operated battery operated then inhibitory pressure so that can be simply given by your hands if you feel that the clonus is coming in ankle or if you feel that calf is having uh, spasticity so you can put your hand firmly over the calf region near the tendon and then you maintain the contact clear so because of this contact okay there will be reduction in clonus or there will be reduction in tone clear now extraceptive technique so simply by touch brushing icing stroking we are using uh, for extraceptive stimulation so if you think of any stroke patient or cerebral palsy patient so in that case the stroking that is stepping and icing these are frequently used techniques by physiotherapists whenever you want to start the movement from paralysis or whenever you want to increase the muscle power so most of the time the icing will be given fast icing okay in cerebral palsy patients many times we are using brushing fast brushing okay to increase the muscle tone okay when you want to decrease you go for slow and sustained brushing you go for prolonged icing you go for very slow stroking clear so fast will increase muscle tone will increase behavior slow will decrease muscle tone decrease muscle behavior now vestibular stimulation so slow rocking movement and fast angular movements so slow rocking movement best example is swing clear so if you swing very slowly you will enjoy it clear it is slow rocking movement uh, we all need hammock or uh, palna we call it palna for uh, uh, when the child is small or child is uh, having uh, age less than one years or two years so at that time we are giving this type of the hammock type of stimulation clear so just by slow rocking movements the child will slip clear and fast angular patterns okay so just imagine that you are in that ride clear we have different types of the rides available in fun park so this hammocks they are also available so they are moving very fast in angular pattern so that will stimulate your vestibular system and many times we have seen that the people uh, those are sitting in this fast moving hammock they will be having vomiting also why because now the vestibular system has got excessive stimulus clear so the slow rocking movement will be cns uh, depression so the child will slip okay and fast angular pattern will increase this vestibular stimulation so many times you have headache giddiness vomiting clear so this is the difference slow and fast one will be facilitatory and one will be inhibitory 
now by giving different special sense stimulation also we will be able to get proper response so by uh, different visual different auditory different olfactory test and touch stimulation we are getting the response there are specialized labs available where uh, you can uh, get this bright lights okay or the light will be moving in series clear there will be different sounds so for example if the sound comes from my left side my head will rotate to left side because that will be the response of my spinotactile tract clear so by this different type of the stimuli of the special senses we can get some motor performance okay many times the multisensorial approach will be also used so that we will learn in the uh, next that is sensor integration approach where the multiple systems they are getting stimulation at the same time clear then uh, mostly for the cerebral palsy uh, patients autonomic nervous system stimulation techniques will be used less okay because uh, practically they are difficult okay and the child will also not be cooperative so most of the time we are not using this autonomic nervous system stimulation techniques in cerebral palsy patient at least now third approach we are starting with that is sensory integration clear so what is sensory integration so just imagine that uh, you are driving your car clear so your vision is also important when you drive the car okay so you are watching that which vehicles are coming in front of you by the side of you okay and uh, based on that visual stimuli you are getting you will be controlling your steering with your hands and you will be controlling your brake and accelerator with your legs okay so that was vision that we understood now just for example if someone is blowing horn from your back side okay any vehicle is coming and you are listening to blowing of horn so that is listened by your ear okay so that is part of hearing system okay so depending on that hearing stimulus also you will be changing your direction of the car okay by your uh, moving movement of the steering so that is with the help of your uh, hands upper limb and you will be also either using brake or accelerator depending on the requirement of that situation clear so here your motor performance is to change the direction with your upper limb and to increase or decrease the speed with your lower limb okay but how it will be guided so it will be guided by your visual system as well as hearing system clear so that is nothing but it is one type of the sensory integration that will affect your reaction clear so what is sensory integration sensory integration is the neurological process that organizes sensation from one's body and the environment therefore body can react effectively in the environment clear so here in our example of car driving environment is how to be a safe driver when you are driving car okay so that is your reaction okay how to be uh, driving how to drive car safely okay so that is your reaction in environment effective reaction but how it was possible so it was possible because of your sensation clear so the same principle is used by sensory integration so who gave this approach so jean arias so jean arias she was occupational therapist and educational psychologist so she developed this approach of sensory integration now different sensory systems they are already available vestibular tactile proprioceptive auditory visual olfactory gustatory all this we know clear so this systems can be used for different types of the sensory integration so whatever the innovative or whatever uh, new stimulus or new type of the technique you have in your mind that you can use here clear for example swinging so that will be the best example of vestibular stimulation tactile simply if you touch the child so that will be tactile stimulation proprioceptive so if the child is jumping clear so that will give stimulus to proprioceptive system then auditory by different musics like if i uh, listen very fast music okay so my driving speed will increase if i uh, listen the slow music so my driving speed will reduce clear if i have dj so definitely if i am lying on the floor and 
if I uh, listen this music of DJ so I will get up and I will start dancing okay but if I listen very uh, sad song or if I listen very uh, soothing music so even if I am standing I will slip okay I will lie down and I would like to prefer to slip why because it is soothing effect so auditory sensation is also having effect on our central nervous system it may work as stimulator of the cns and it may work as inhibitor of cns for visual also we discuss few examples like in car driving olfactory and gustatory so some smells they are irritative some smells they are soothing clear okay in the same way test also we have different tests few tests we will like few tests we will not like why because some of them they are stimulant to our central nervous system and some of them they are inhibitant of our nervous system clear now for sensor integration mostly we are using this three sensory systems tactile vestibular and proprioceptive clear all other systems they are there but for sensor integration focus is on this three remaining can also be stimulated now this system they will interact with each other so what they will be allowing to the patient so they will be allowing the patient to experience interpret and respond to different stimuli in environment clear so that is the best example that we discuss of car driving or even if you are uh, walking on the road clear so your uh, whatever like stone is giving injury okay so to your sole of the foot so that will change your walking style okay if you are having uh, this uh, vestibular stimulation like if you are walking on fast moving bus so at that time you will not be able to judge properly for maintaining your balance why because it is your vestibular stimulation sometimes if you are walking on uh, form surface okay then you will be walking properly but if you are walking on any soft surface then you will fall also for example if there is mud okay and you are walking on that so you're not getting proper proprioceptive stimulation clear so it will be very difficult to maintain the balance clear if you are walking on uh, cotton then again you are not getting proper proprioceptive stimulus so it is the chance that you will fall also clear so all this sensory systems they are interacting with each other clear but if i am walking on proper hard surface okay and that is also giving me proper tactile stimulus for example if i'm uh, walking on very hot surface so even though it is very hard in summer but because of this tactile i will not be able to walk properly i will change my walking style clear why because the tactile stimulation is too much why because the floor is hot okay in the noon if you walk barefoot so even though your surface is hard that is giving you proper proprioceptive stimulation but just because of excessive temperature of the floor your walking pattern will be affected why because the tactile stimulation is not proper clear or if the movement occurs of your supporting surface so as we discuss of moving bus or i will not be able to walk properly in moving bus why because it is continuously stimulating my vestibular system my head is moving in horizontal direction okay as the bus is moving clear yeah, so that is vestibular stimulation so for proper walking we need good sensation good control from this tactile vestibular and proprioceptive system if any one of this is not working our performance will be affected now uh, this is one laboratory and that is shown so it looks like fun park so actually it is that only so here different uh, uh, this uh, tools they are available so they will be responsible for giving different sensation to child so here you can see the surface that is floor mat so that will be very soft so that will be working to reduce the proprioceptive load okay some surfaces they will be very hard so that will increase the proprioceptive load you can see vestibular ball also and bolsters also so they will be responsible for giving uh, training on the dynamic surface where so vestibular system is also stimulated you can see swing or hammock so that will be also working as one type of the vestibular stimulation clear there are different objects what the child will touch so that will be type of tactile stimulation clear so 
this si therapy it provides opportunity for the engagement in sensory motor activities so here the lab is designed in such a way that the child will play inside and indirectly he or she is stimulating their tactile system vestibular system and proprioceptive system so nowadays it is mole culture that you can see it is not for cp patient it is for normal children but even the normal children will enjoy this why because they are getting stimulation of their tactile vestibular and proprioceptive systems clear now here what should be our role so as a therapist uh, mainly we have to observe the child that what the child is doing okay at the same time you have to control his or her activity if that activity is not suitable as per his or her condition clear so here the child should be allowed to play with supervision supervision or observation in such a way that child is not falling or child is not getting any injury okay in the same way depending on the child's condition or depending on the child's clinical feature particular activity if that is harmful to that child like particular activity if it increases the tone of the child or if it is giving excessive stimulation to the child so the spasticity will increase if the child is excited clear so that activity should be avoided so in any activity if the child gets excitement definitely the spasticity will increase clear so that should be the role of physiotherapist or duty of the physiotherapist to control all this with proper guidance so here the child is guided through challenging and fun activities designed to stimulate and integrate sensory system challenge his or her motor systems and facilitate integration of sensory motor cognitive and perceptual skills clear so here all we know when the child will play he will be getting sensory stimulation he will be getting motor performance okay and uh, different activities will also challenge his cognitive and perceptual skill cognitive means to learn something okay receiving analyzing and executing so that is cognition perceptual means how you are perceiving that stimuli clear so here for example if the child is climbing the small steps so child will be able to judge the exact height of the steps to put the next step clear so here the child is using depth perception clear if the child is throwing a ball okay uh, so definitely the child will be having some target over which the child is throwing a ball yes actually it is play activity but the child is having judgment of that distance clear so position of a particular object in space that will be also identified by this child okay so that is what that is nothing but perception clear so child is also developing different cognitive and perceptual skill so as the child is learning new things so we can say that child is getting good cognition and if you can think of this perception so perception means child is getting distance perception height perception position in space perception etc now sensory integration will be having different techniques okay those are used so the list is here brushing deep pressure sensation joint compression and distraction vibration and sense of smell so we are learning one by one so what will be the role of brushing so brushing has facilitatory and inhibitory effect depending upon the part being rubbed or brushed and whether the stimulation is light or deep so very simple explanation we can give that if we give fast brushing and deep brushing so it will be working as facilitator so that can be used for hypotonic child but if you give slow brushing and light brushing okay speed wise slow and pressure wise light clear so that will be working as inhibitory technique so that will reduce the muscle tone so that will be useful for spastic child now the deep pressure sensation so here what we have to do is the child will be there okay the child will be covered by two mats from both the sides and then the bolster will be rolled over that child clear 
so that will be stimulating the deep pressure sensation so that will be mostly done for hyperactive and destructible child and uh, it is assumed that this will increase the concentration of the child so it will be helpful for different learning skills because if the child is hyperactive and distractible child will never learn new things or new skills so by this activity you can give this type of the training by two mats with bolster rolling on that so you can think of sandwich clear so where there are two layers of the bread there will be mats okay and inside there will be child okay and the bolster is rolling over that mat on upper mat clear so by this the child will become calm and uh, he will be better manage now the joint compression and distraction both will be working as facilitator but uh, here we have to take care that uh, joint compression is not given if the joint is inflamed or injured okay and in the same way distraction is also not given if the joint is unstable or subluxated otherwise joint compression and distraction will be very good for facilitation vibration so most commonly used tool in uh, clinical therapy settings it is vibrator so vibrators will be given over the different body tissues and over on the bones also so different instruments they are available so that will be facial vibrator motor driven that is battery operated vibrator okay so all these vibrators they are readily available in markets which will be used by child okay some vibrators they are of a large size where the child can lie also child can sit also and child can stand also even in few uh, gyms also we will be having this type of the vibrators where the adult will also stand and then by switching on it there will be vibration clear so all these are vibrations so those will be helpful to reduce the muscle tone so this vibration if it is given fast it will be increasing muscle tone and if it is given slow it will reduce the muscle tone now different uh, smells especially the stronger smell will stimulate the reticular arousal system yes yeah, so if the strong smell is given so it will increase patient's alertness why because it is working as facilitator for cns or we can say that it is cns stimulant now for sensory integration there are two standard equipments one is scooter board clear so here in the figure only you can see one scooter like structure is there so that can be used for giving position to child so here what the child is doing the upper part of the uh, sorry lower part of the chest and the lumbar region is supported hips and knees and ankles they will be out of this support and on anterior side the child's head is not supported and upper part of the uh, chest is also not supported so child will be moving this scooter by the movement of his or her hands clear so here the hand will be also getting exercise head control will also be developed as the child is moving in the linear uh, style okay anteriorly so that will be stimulation for vestibular system also then the child is keeping uh, hips knee and uh, ankle uh, that is against gravity they will be maintaining this position so that will also develop the postural control clear so here the upper limbs they are getting exercise lower limbs they are getting anti gravity control head is also getting anti gravity control clear as the same time the child is touching floor so that will be tactile stimulation child is moving anteriorly so that will be vestibular stimulation by movement of the elbow uh, raised shoulder okay so by this sensation of movement child will be also getting proprioceptive stimulation so many systems tactile proprioceptive vestibular they are stimulated and what they are giving good head control good trunk control good uh, lower limb anti gravity control clear so this will be the advantage of this aeroplane position okay or uh, this uh, lying or resting on 
scooter board and scooter board is one type of the dynamic surface over which the child will be moving okay so this board as we discussed it supports middle part of the child's body while the head upper chest and legs they are not supported so they will develop anti-gravity control okay when the child rides across the floor so they will be getting different sensory stimulation okay and they will be also holding both ends of their body upper and lower part of the body okay against gravity they will be holding now this position so as we discuss it is uh, strengthening all these extensors head extensors means neck extensors upper back extensors lower back extensors lower limb extensors so all these extensors will be helpful later on for good postural and motor responses so this anti-gravity or extensor uh, muscle strengthening will be helpful for standing walking and other activities for this CP child okay why because they will stimulate this gravity receptors and semicircular canal receptors as we discuss they will be also stimulating vestibular system so vestibular system means it is containing gravity receptors or we can say them autolith organ it includes utricle and secule okay so this autolith organ made up of utricle and secule they will be judging the anti-gravity movement okay and also linear movement we can say okay and the semicircular canal that is also part of vestibular system that will be identifying the angular movement clear so linear movement will be identified by autolith organ that is made up of this uh, utricle and secule while angular movement will be identified by semicircular canal and now we all know that vestibular system is stimulated by this activity so that is nothing but sensory integration now second is bolster swing so you can see this type of the bolster swing and in many parks the swings they are available and we know that the children will be enjoying this clear why because that will develop touch because definitely you are in contact with that particular supporting surface so that is bolster here that will be also giving vestibular stimulation why because it is moving in arc fashion and just to main uh, just to uh, maintain this arc you need to use your lower limbs and upper limbs okay your upper limbs will uh, operate this ropes on which the bolster is hang and your lower limbs by touching the floor they will be maintaining this movement of this bolster swing okay so you are getting touch you are getting vestibular stimulation and you are getting proprioceptive sensation also okay touch because you are in contact vestibular because that swing is moving in arc fashion okay and proprioceptive that is movement of your uh, joints of upper limbs and lower limb okay so that will be also useful and this information will be integrated and there will be responsible for good motor performance in later life these all are my references if you have any question you can ask thank you